Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to play blues licks over a walking bass line in E, over a 12 bar blues. So if you wanna download the tab for what I just played, you can go to the link below or the link on screen, sign up for my newsletter and download the tab for this lesson and for a lot of other lessons here on my YouTube channel. Let's start off with the bass line. So we're playing over a 12 bar blues in E. There's no quick four, which means we're not going to the four chord in the second bar. So the first line is four bars of E, and the bass line is just going up from the root to the second, to the flat third, to the fourth. So steady bass on the low E string, and we're gonna have that four times in a row. Now, what finger you're actually using with your fretting hand is going to change based on what we're holding down on top. And in fact, to hold down this double stop, you're gonna to have to use your index finger the whole time. And if that feels weird or awkward, you can start off by just playing the flat seven right here on the third fret of the second string, not including the fifth and the flat seven. The fifth is the note we've got here on the fourth fret of the third string. So that double stop, right? But you could just grab this. Depending on what finger you grab it with, that could make it more flexible for what you're gonna do over here as far as playing the bass notes. The general rule of thumb is you wanna start off at least thinking about one fret, one finger per fret. So notes at the first fret defaulting to the index finger, notes at the second fret with the middle finger and so on. But that breaks down really quickly. All it does is give you a starting place so that you're not trying to grab like a lower bass note and then like a higher melody note and like getting all kind of tangled up and upside down. So for the bass line, for now, you can just practice finding the notes with whatever finger works, or you can kind of anticipate what's going to happen and work on playing the bass line with the index finger. When we get to the second line, the middle four bars of the blues, the bass line is going to go up to A for two bars, and it's the exact same idea. We're gonna play the root, second, flat third, and third of A for two bars. And then go back and play two more bars in E. When we get to the turnaround, the last four bars of the blues, we're gonna have a bass line that goes up from the root of B, root, second, flat third on the open fourth string, and major third, first fret on the fourth string. So same idea as the other two chords. And then down to A, and then two more times on E. So we're always ending the line on E, right? So the first time we've got twice on E and then two more times on E. So bars one, bar two, bar three, bar four. Next line we have bar five on A, bar six on A, and then back to bar seven on E, bar eight on E. Turn around. Bar nine, we have the B chord. Bar 10, we have the A chord. And then again, bars 11 and 12, back to E. So that's the entire bass line and everything else is gonna be played over that bass line. Now let's look at the first line of the melody. So what is going on on top? What are you playing with your fingers for the first four bars? And we have this. break that up into three phrases. We have a short pickup right into the beginning of the tune. One and two and three and four and one. So that's the first short phrase. And it lands with that double stop right on the one, right on the downbeat of the first bar. And then coming out of that, phrase which starts on the and of four of the first measure and takes you all the way through to land you on the downbeat of bar three. One and two and three and four and one. So those two phrases make a little call and response. Short phrase and then the longer one. So it brings you back into the beginning of bar three with a sense of resolution 
And then there's a little answer. Two, three, four, and. So that's like a little echo resolution, like a little just sort of answer to the answer. And we're gonna have that kind of the same framework in the next, uh, in the next four bars. But so for now, make sure you're using your fingers and not your thumb to play because the thumb's gonna be busy later. And um, as a basic assignment, sort of uh, just default, I'm putting my in, using my index finger for the third string, my middle finger for the second string, and my ring finger for the high string. Now the second line starts coming out of the end of bar four. So you can see the back half of it is the same. So basically, all of that is going to be the same as in the previous line. But we're opening with this phrase. So coming out of the end of bar four, one and two and three and four and one, two, like that. So now, instead of just having a short phrase that resolves when we get to bar five, we get to the A chord, it kind of uh, hangs on uh, the resolution into bar five is delayed by a little bit. So we land on the root, we have this slightly longer phrase, and it doesn't really resolve until one and two and three and, until the end of three in bar five, when we get to, and we're basically spelling out an A chord here. Right, here's the root and the third and the fifth with a little hammer on. But that's kind of, that's a delayed resolution, right? We have the pickup, but we land there on the end of three. And then we're ready to go into this phrase that's gonna take us back to the one chord, which we've already seen, and which also is gonna have that same little echo resolution at the end of it. And so that basically um, is the entire, that's the entire second line. So the third line, bars nine through 12, has a different pickup also. Another kind of delayed resolution, right? So we're coming out of bar nine, one and two and three and four and So similar phrasing to the way we get into the second line. And we're on the B7 chord now, so we're playing the root, the root, the flat seven, the flat three, and root of B. But then we have the same lick in bar 10 that we had in bar six. And then the only thing that's different is here, the sort of, answer to the answer, the echo resolution here, is this busier blues lick. And we're back on E, so this is the flat third and root of E, and the second and the sixth. So it's got that bright and dark thing where it's got the flat third from the minor pentatonic or the blues scale, but it's got the second and the sixth from the major pentatonic scale. So now we've got all three phrases. looking at just the melody without worrying about the bass, you can start to see what's getting repeated and what's getting changed. And that way, you don't have to think of it as 12 whole bars of melody to learn. There's maybe only six or seven bars of actual information because you're doing so much repetition in the melody itself. So now let's start looking at how to put it all together. I mean, again, we can just work line by line. So we've got the bass for the first four bars always on E. And we've got this opening phrase The first two notes happen before the downbeat, and the third one happens right on the downbeat. 
So around the first bar, we've got a pinch on beat one, and then the bass keeps going. And then on the and of four, we've got this individual note, and then we've got a set of pinches. We've got this eighth note lick. Very even, one and two and three and four and one. And so every time you're saying a number, one, two, three, four, you're pinching with whatever the bass is doing. Now if the bass wasn't walking, you just have is walking and so it's a matter of working out what note you, what finger are you going to use for the bass when you're playing whatever it is you're playing on top and the good news is unlike playing chords where you're holding down three or four notes at a time at any moment when you're playing a blues lick over a walking bass line you're only having to think about a total of two notes and sometimes you have an open string as well so And so the trick is just, well, there's a few things. One is that certain combinations sound really dissonant out of context. When you're hearing it go by as a bass line in a melody, it sounds great, but when you go slowly to learn it, not everything sounds all that great. But just go through step by step. That works, ring finger and open, open, index finger and ring finger coming in, middle finger and index, ring and index, and then you gotta let go of the bass, you won't really notice it when you're playing in time, for the hammer on, and then ring and middle, You can see that rule at play where like here's my ring finger on the fourth fret here's my index finger on the second fret this would kind of be the default but once you've got a melody note that's up this high and a, a bass note up here you don't have to think like this if that feels awkward just play ring and index kind of move the whole idea of one fret per one finger per fret up to the second to the fifth frets and you'll be it'll be pretty easy to find the notes that you need to find so coming into the second line We've got and it might be more sensible start with the middle finger here because the middle finger on the second fret and the index finger is free and then ring finger comes in because that's what's available and hammer on with the index finger sounds really dissonant until you get where you're going and just instead of going to the pinky just push the ring finger up into play so and now we've got basically the same thing we just had except that the bass is going up the fifth string instead of the fourth string so all the left hand fingerings can be the same um, second line we've got a little moment where we're doing this lick coming in with the ring finger at the fourth fret and index finger on the second fret and now we're into the third line so we've got a pinch another pinch and so we're using index and ring and then middle fingers free for the melody open string in the bass index finger for the bass and then same old thing. And then we've got this ending lick. With a lot of open strings, right? So, so. Use the ring finger or the pinky. Maybe, let's see. I have to play up a tempo to really figure out. Mm. Oh yeah, so, so middle finger and pinky, and then 
ring finger and then hammer on with the index. So. And that's the whole set of combinations that makes the whole thing go together. So obviously the trick is not necessarily the bass alone or the melody alone, but putting them together and figuring out how the left hand fingering is going to work. And it can be a bit of a process of going back and forth between trying to play what you figured out a little closer to tempo so that you know what you have to actually be able to execute and then slowing it back down and practicing those moves and realizing, oh, this finger would be better, that finger would be better. The tricky thing is, as you saw, like uh, when you slow it down a lot, you have more time to try different things. And so, uh, you know, like I couldn't remember which finger was right because I was like, well, when I slow it down, you could kind of do anything. But once you get it up to tempo, it's like, oh, there's really only one combination that's going to actually work when you're trying to play it, you know, at the, you know, at full speed. So go slowly through the bass, through the melody, look at, you know, the tab can really help you sort of visualize lining up the pinches where the bass and the melody go together. And then over time, you'll be able to slowly put each line together and then sort of string the whole thing together as so you can play the whole thing. So again, if you want to download the tab, go to the link below or the link on screen, sign up, get the tab. There's some other walking bass lessons and a lot of other blues lessons here on the channel. And I um, hope you have fun working on this and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.